Our first static analysis example is a two-dimensional truss made of steel with uh, square cross sections. We are interested in finding out what is the maximum deflection, what are the element actual forces, what are the element actual stresses, and what are the reaction forces at the support locations. So it is simply supported essentially like a pin joint at the left end and a thousand newton force applied on the right hand. We can simplify this as a two-dimensional truss problem, um, but in fact we'll use a 3D element to simulate this using the link 180 in ANSYS mechanical APDL. We'll specify a cross-sectional area of 400 mm square for each element. So we will start using mechanical APDL for this application. In mechanical APDL, uh, we will start by opening the preprocessor and defining our element type. So we will add our element type, which is a link, link 180. So we will click OK and it will assign a reference number of 1. We can close that and for this element type we will need to, need to define a cross-sectional area so we can go to sections and define a link section. We'll just click on add, give it a reference number of 1 and click OK and section name we can simply call it rectangle and the section area is 400 mm square. So this element will be working in both tension and compression. So we'll press OK. We'll need to then define our material property. We'll define a structural material, linear, elastic and isotropic. So the material is steel, Young's modulus EX is 207,000 newtons per millimeter square and Poisson ratio is 0 0.3. So press OK to accept that and close the materials dialog box. And we can then go into our direct modeling. So we will create nodes and elements directly in this case. To define the nodes, go to nodes in active coordinate system. So node number 1 is effectively at 0, 0 and 0. Press apply. Node number 2 is at 1000 millimeters in the X axis. So press apply again. So node number 3 is 0 in X and 1000 in Y. So press OK. So we can now see our nodes 1, 2 and 3. The next action is to define our elements. We can say first of all go to elements, element attributes. By default it picks up the first element type which is link 180. Material number is 1. Real constant isn't relevant for this one but the section number is 1, which is a rectangle, and it's a straight line element. So press OK to accept that, and we can then go to Auto Numbered through nodes. So if we click on first node and the second node and press Apply, that blue line indicates that our first element is defined. We can continue clicking on node 2 and node 3 and press OK. So these are our two elements defined directly. The next part is to define our uh, boundary conditions. If for some reason you make a mistake, like defining the elements, um, you can actually go and delete them. You can delete nodes and elements and reassign them. 
if you do a mouse operation like if you zoom in and out of your view you'll find that the blue lines disappear but in fact the elements are still there you can use the utility menu at the top you can do plot elements and you can see the elements another useful thing is to be able to see the node numbers and element numbers so we can do that by plot controls numbering and turn on node numbers and also element numbers and we can click OK on that one so we can see that node 1, node 2 and node 3 and elements 1 and 2 are displayed so this effectively finishes the geometry of our model we need to apply some loads to it we can do it in the preprocessor by default our analysis will be static so we did loads analysis type new analysis static and next we define our loads apply structural displacement and nodes so we'll need to select the two nodes at the left end of our model and we'll need to say fix all degrees of freedom on these these are 3D link elements so the nodes on them effectively have three degrees of freedom that is the translations in X, Y and Z so we are fixing all three degrees of freedom at both ends of this truss the other one we need to add is to fix node 2 in the Z direction only so that it doesn't effectively start rotating in the Y axis which is um, a free, sorry, which is a rigid body motion so we can fix that node node 2 in UZ click OK so the next thing is to apply our force and we can do that on the node directly in this model so we select node 2 and then apply a force in Y direction with a value of minus 1000 so that is applied vertically and shown as a red arrow so that completes the boundary conditions on this model and we can go to solution we can define a solution using current load step and when we click that it gives the status and asks us if it's OK press OK and takes a second to solve you can close this window and since you got the solutions done you can actually now look at the results under general post processor so if you look at result summary you'll find that there is one result at time one seconds there's only one load set we need to do a read results first set to read that first set of results and then we can do plot results deformed shape deformed and undeformed press OK and we can see that the frame structure the truss structure is displacing as we expected with a maximum deflection of about 0 0.05 millimeters the next thing we can do is plot a representation of member forces and member stresses in order to get the member forces and element stresses we'll need to create some element tables so that will inquire the results database and get the results into tables which can then be plotted one way to find out what uh, storage locations are for each of the element values we can do a help on this particular element help comma 180 internet explorer or chrome your browser default browser and go to the link 180 um, element description so you can learn about uh, the background to this element what sort of input data it needs and 
some theory plus if you scroll down it tells um, what sort of data is available using um, the element table commands for example the stress value SXX is available under item LS and it's available on node I as well as node J now the force a member force is available under S M I S C and location 1 so knowing that we can go to our element table under general post processor go to element table and then define table we'll add and we'll call for example the member force and then that is defined by sequence number and it was under s mask comma one so we can enter that comma one here and press apply so that is defined as a table the other one we wanted to find out was SAXL which is uh, actual stresses just a label that I have defined we can then get that value again by sequence number and it was stored under LS and 1 so if I press OK you can see that there are two tables defined for these results and then we can do a plot of these element tables we can uh, plot the member force and we can see uh, the forces as a minus 1000 compression for this member and 1414 for this member um, we can also plot the uh, actual stresses and then we can see that this bottom element has a minus 2.5 newtons per millimeter square and this angled element has 3.5 newtons per millimeter square another way of seeing these results is using the uh, plot element results so we can do contour plot plot results contour plot line element results and for example this one will give me um, a slightly different representation of these um, member forces I can change that to actual stresses and press OK so effectively similar type of plot but the values have changed into uh, stress values another way of viewing these results is see if you want to do a, for example an element solution and stress in the X components what we can find is that it doesn't really show us the values but there's one way of showing what the element uh, in 3D looks like so if you go to plot controls style size and shape and turn on element shape by clicking this checkbox and press OK now these elements look more like 3D trusses now we can zoom out a bit and then on the right you'll have your viewing menu and on the bottom of that you have the dynamic mode so if you click that and if you right click your mouse you can actually rotate your view to see that the structure is um, represented almost like a 3D structure although we have only defined uh, two elements which are represented as lines um, what we can also do to make this a nice um, animation of the simulation is go to plot controls animate and then deformed results and we can plot the stress in X direction and press OK and we can make that run a bit faster so we can see that um, the element stresses uh, how is that changing in time so we can close that and we can view this from the front 
and now the other thing we wanted to find out was uh, what are the reaction forces at the supports so there is an option to get that under uh, list results so if you get general post processor list results and reaction solution you can say look at all items click on OK and I can see that on node 1 at the bottom there's a reaction of 1000 newtons in the X direction and on node 3 there is 1000 negative in the X direction and 1000 positive in the Y direction so that is our interactive um, simulation of the uh, 3D SPAR. Another way to simulate this is using uh, command lines only. What we can do is select a, a log file that is representative of this uh, geometry. For example, this log file starts with a, a clear operation and then defines the element type, the section property, the material property, the nodes, and then the elements, and that completes the pre-processing. The next part is the solution, where we define the boundary conditions, fixing node 1, node 3, and also node 2 on UZ direction, and applying a force using the F command and solve solves this and the next part of this log file is going to post 1 general post processor setting results 1 plotting the displacements and defining element tables for the member forces and actual stresses and then plotting these as line element results and the last command here is a reaction force uh, listing. So that can be all copied and then entered into the input uh, window here and then run. So when you press enter the whole set of commands are run and then this is the last plot that was done in that log file. So if you want to change anything in your log file, you can edit it and then rerun it as many times as you want. So make sure you save your database frequently if you have a big model and you are only doing it interactively. So that will create a file.db or jobname.db file. Or if you have a log file, make sure you keep a backup of your log file, a simple text file, so that will be quite small in size. So that concludes our uh, 2D trust problem.